All right, so our first semifinal match here. Andrew's playing the wrong game. Playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in this picture with the Yu-Gi-Oh! card. <laughs> it's okay, he's got big numbers here. He's playing ramp. Sure, yeah. It's Basically. about as big as Yu-Gi-Oh! cards there, right? <laughs> kind of off by a couple orders of magnitude, actually. But right. close. Do you think magic would be cooler if we just put two zeros on the end of every creature? I think it would be the opposite of cooler. Land War Elves is 100-100 for single green. It's just so meaningless when everything is actually even evenly divisible. Any digit that you're not ever modifying, if it's just a zero tacked onto every number, what are you doing? You're selling me garbage. You're a snake oil salesman. So you know like the game you'd play in grade school, 500, when you throw a, a ball and then you call a number and everyone's got to catch it and you get points? Should just be five. So, no, no. <laughs> when I used to go the other way, I like to play the game 500 million. Oh, God. So you throw out the first and you'd be like, 100 million. I'm still playing. <laughs> the game just seems so much. It's, it, it's from the future, basically. In the future, every number is larger, but the games are the same. Well, it's inflation, basically. <laughs> For Tom Ross, adding up to 500 or 500 million can be difficult attacking for two at a time. All right. Tom keeping on seven as the one seed. And once the seeding actually really matters in these team tournaments, all three players on their team have get to win the die roll and take the play. So Tom Ross will be on the play here against Andrew Hollingsworth. Andrew has kept on a six card hand. Oftentimes on the draw, a six-card hand is fine, but you have to remember that Andrew's playing Ramp, a deck that very that wants to avoid mulligans more than most. Yeah, you'll want it to be a good six. A uh, couple wins on the deck registration seat, three main deck Kozlex returns for Andrew. And there are uh, two Hour of Devastations as well further up the curve. That one's a little more difficult to convert in the matchup, but for a Braid, Delp catch up as well. Omat Courier will start the game for Tom off a Sun Scorched Desert, swinging in. Interestingly, Tom starting on the desert. It's free. Had wondered whether or not it meant he was keeping a no red hand. There's no way you can do that. No, but you can make your opponent think you did. <laughs> but Walkways tells friends, Man, my mono red opponent kept all colors, and then he drew the mountain. <laughs> Bomat Courier can be joined by another Bomat Courier. Both swing in for two more. You do get to pretend like you drew it when you play it. So there's that. You should draw it, and you just go, whoosh, whoosh, sigh of relief really loud. <laughs> that and was then, lucky. And then drop a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been a fast game if I didn't draw this one. <laughs> <laughs> see, see if you can get your opponent to tilt. <laughs> it's going to be a... Shrine of the Forsaken Gods into Walking Ballista for Hollingsworth. This 1-1, one, one, solid on the boards that can block and trade with Bomat Couriers. Three Walking Ballista in the main deck in this matchup. Frequently play it for two mana and use it to trade with one creature. Yeah, and it'll convert here. If you Tom wait until combat here against Tom, though, you might face off against a creature that's built to smash. Yeah, I heard that you, he built those Couriers that they could smash. So Andrew not going to take that risk. Ballista before combat shoots down the courier with two cards under it. Means Tom will swing in for two. Went triple one drop here as Soulscar Mage joined in last turn. Now he has to be concerned about Kozilek's return. Green Red Ramps a deck that plays four copies. Actually, Andrew with three copies in the main, fourth in the board. Yep, Karizev plays around that a little bit. Does have three toughness. And Tom getting very light on cards in hand. Might be looking to convert this Bowmat Courier at some point here. So yeah, when you play all one drops. <laughs> a second shrine for Andrew. That means no red mana just yet. Yeah, he had the option to play Shelter Thicket and actually chose to play the shrine. He's at 14. See Tom counting up. One, two, three from the creatures. The Raghavan token from Carrie Zev would make it five. So with that not cycling the sheltered thicket, suggest that natural connections in the hand, that's going to find a mountain, okay. the plan to cycle the thicket if need be. Not to mention that it can't cast a ramp spell on this turn anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, why? at first it looks suspicious, you know, why not play your tap land if you can't do anything off the mana anyway? Most ramp decks don't play at instant speed. This is, yeah, there's not much in the way of instant speed rampant growth effects in the history of magic. 
Love it. Natural Connection now joins the club alongside Harrow. <laughs> and that may be... It's, it's an elite club. <laughs> Swing with three. Raghavan token enters. So three, four, five. Built to smash on Bomat Courier. And Tom taking advantage of the fact that Andrew has no red mana up. This is three damage extra on the career and a point of prowess from the Soulscar Mage. Guarantees a hit. It's also getting that card out of the hand so that Tom yeah. can activate the Bowman career and go up on cards. So One of the cards in hand is Scrap Heap Scrounger. He could commit that or discard it to the career. Nine total damage should set Andrew down to five as he casts Natural Connection. And it's one of the questions I have when you talk about a ramp deck in the format, or just a format in general, is does ramp beat aggro? If you take your low-end aggro deck and your ramp deck, how fast is the ramp deck? Some formats, this is a gr depending on the sweepers, it's a great matchup for ramp. Other formats, it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. With the ramp spells starting at three, and with Kozilek's returns being one of the big draws, also starting at three, mm -hmm. it's a pretty awkward matchup for the ramp deck. It certainly looks like it. Andrew at five, just, and his deck's doing what it does. But what it does just isn't quick enough here. There was a lot of pressure for him just to have a turn three Kozilex return. And if he had a return here and waited until combat, you know, he could take care of the Regavon in the combat. He'd still get, take the hit from the Karizev, risk getting hit by the Soul Scar Mage, and if there's a built to smash, then it's really just a disaster. You know, he just loses that game. And there is Kozlek's return in hand. If he just fires off the return now, then still gets hit for three, just on the board. It's here's a tough spot. Yeah, here's Sheltered Thicket. Said he had it, so I didn't really play last turn. Even with Kozlek's return in hand, you, know, you, know, you see Hour of Promise here for Andrew, but he's just running out of life points. Says go. Tom just untaps. Continues to put cards under that Bomat career. Draws Magma Spray. That one not really going to do much of anything in this matchup. No, but Tom can force action. This swing is for five. It's lethal. Andrew has to make a play. Musingly, Magma Spray can be a pump spell for the Soul Scar Mage. Ooh. And actually... Well, Ooh. I suppose if the uh, his return tags the uh, Regavan token, that makes it so that would not be lethal. Here's the 2-1, the and another card under Bowmat Career. Does Andrew have anything? Here is Kozilek's return. Yeah, Tom could Magma Spray the Ragavan, maybe? They Magma Spray that or the Courier, sack the Courier to put those four cards in his hand. Sure. It would save the... Soul Scar Mage seems good. The Magus Prey is not really likely to meaningfully convert in any other way. Let's see what Tom chooses. Scrap Heap Scrounger also in hand, so another card he wouldn't, he wouldn't mind discarding. Mm -hmm. Though if he wants to bring it back, he would need to play a little differently. So we'll see Magma Spray hits Ragavan. Soul Scar Mage pumps. Now, Andrew let Tom put a fourth card on her Bomat Courier before making this play. Because he needed to hit Raghavan? Yep. I suppose he could have made the play pre-combat. No, then he still... Got there's no, Yeah, you yep. have to hit Raghavan. Yep. Awkward timing. Tom uses Courier to discard the hand and draw four. If he draws a black dual land, he can make Scrap Heap Scrounger out of the graveyard, and he does, foreboding ruins. And still just maintains lethal on the board. Right. And that's... And the end step's so important here, you see Hour of Devastation drawn by Andrew that doesn't actually save him, though, because of the, the Scrap Heap Scrounger. Right. Yeah. Neither Hour of Devastation nor Hour of Promise would really do enough here. Cast Hour of Devastation leaves the colorless mana up, so no Magma Spray. Well, Tom says got Scrap Heap Scrounger. Only has two red sources. Also, no Can't Magma Sprays yeah. in his main deck. So game <laughs> one goes to Mono Red, Aggro, and Tom Ross. Taking the win of the die roll and really capitalizing the fact that he his deck is much faster here. Oh, yeah. By a lot. All right. You see Andrew goes toward the sideboard. He's got a 
bring that curve lower if at all possible. Let's look at some of the cards he has to do it with. Four Thought Not Seer, three Tireless Tracker, the fourth Kozlex Return, two copies of Magma Spray, a Chandra Flame Caller, two Crumbles to Crumble to Dust, an Hour of Devastation, and then a copy of the split card, Struggle. Yeah, so the uh, biggest cards here, the Kozlex Return and two Magma Sprays, good removal spells. Uh, struggle to Survive is a little bit loose as a removal spell. That's actually largely used as a graveyard hate spell because a Survive can shuffle in an opponent's graveyard. Struggle a little inefficient as a removal spell. Thought Not Seer is actually pretty reasonable in this matchup because it does lower your mana curve. You know, you want to get some of these Ulamogs out of here and you can get a look at Tom's hand, remove something, and have a really good blocker on the battlefield. Yeah, and this is another matchup where those Eldrazi Obligators, Karzov's expertise is on Tom's side, could be good. Um, when Andrew boards his curve down this much, so we're losing some number of these Ulamogs and World Breakers, how many do you feel? I don't like any of the cards in them, those in the matchup, but he needs some of them, I, perhaps, to, so that his Kozlex returns can still hit. Yeah, it's nice to be able to rebuy them. You know, he has four Olamog and three World Breaker. He wants to go way lower on this stuff. Yeah. And there's a question of whether Hour of Devastation is even good or how good it is. When you have four Kozlex Return post cyborg and you're bringing yeah. in a lot of one-for-one -one removal spells, you can't just wait around to play a sweeper against this deck. So many of Tom's cards just have haste. Yeah. Do you have a thought as to how many, how low can he go on the the Eldrazi, the ways to trigger return? Uh, so you do have ways to present damage with Hour of Promise, producing zombie tokens. Um, if, you, if you only leave in a couple of them, you can always use your Sanctum of Ugans to find another one when you draw one. So, you know, maybe like leave in a couple of the World Breakers and an Ulamog. I, if, if it was all possible, I would try to be off Ulamog entirely, but right. leaving one in to trigger off of your Sanctum when you cast a World Breaker seems reasonable. All right, on Tom Ross's side... His matchup just continues to improve. Three copies of Blazing Volley, two Aethersphere Harvester, two Harsh Mentor, two Hanweir Garrison, an Invigorated Rampage, a Chandra's Defeat, a Magma Spray, an Eldrazi Obligator, a third Chandra, and a Carry Zev's Expertise. So the uh, threat and effects, like you said, they're going to be quite good here. Eldrazi Obligator, uh, Kari Zev's Expertise, those going to steal some damage here. Uh, Hanwood Garrison, because it survives Magma Spray and because it survives Coldex Return, seems pretty reasonable here. There's an argument for bringing in um, stuff like Aethersphere Harvester and Chandra Torch of Defiance just because the removal spells coming from Andrew's deck aren't going to be able to deal with them. Uh, so that stuff all seems fine. Yeah, but, but, but the big hits are going to be the threat and effects here. Right, he has those. So it, it's there's some sideboard adapting for Andrew, but I am... I guess when he's on the play, it might be good. I'm still concerned that if he wins this, what might happen when we go to game three. Right. I Speaking of another match that's going to game two, though, over on this modern table, it is Todd Stevens taking game one over Burn. We saw this full matchup earlier, and it's it's a disaster for the Burn deck. Yeah, a lot, so much of what Todd is doing is just so good against Burn. Voice of Resurgence on two is usually worth at least two cards. Corsair Crucifix, really the same thing. So hard to answer, so good against all the creatures. Collected company into all this stuff. It's a really nice matchup for Todd. And we'll get a report on our legacy table. Looks like they're just finishing up their game as well. So the next set coming out, Ixalan. I know it's a ways away. We haven't even had the Pro Tree yet for Hour of Devastation. But we do have, what we do know, is a playmat about Ixalan with a bunch of animals on it. That's going to be showing up at a pre-release near you. This is the Jolly Rover. It's this roving band of scourge, scourge pirates on the sea. And look, look at them. They're just so fierce. We have their captain there in the red jacket. I just noticed that there's sea monsters in this picture. I didn't even... In the, like, like in, in the waves? There's some spooky stuff out there. That's okay. You got you got a cat. Cats eat fish. There's just more to this art every time you look at it. Yeah, you can... This will be given away at pre-releases September 23rd, 24th, and your store can be involved. Ask your local store to sign up today, and they can do so at StarCityGames.com slash pre-release. Well, it's not exactly a clean sweep for the number one seed. Over in Legacy, and that's the tough matchup indeed, it was Dan Savage with Sneak and Show winning the first game. And that should be a pretty good matchup for the Sneak and Show side. Yeah, and that's why this standard matchup matters so much. It, it is favorable for Tom Ross. It's probably the closest matchup of these three. I believe that, yeah. Which isn't, I, I don't think that's a great sign for Andrew Hollingsworth. 
He's, he's behind here, both on the scoreboard and on the deck sheet. He does get considerably better post sideboard. Okay. Has lost ex less yeah. expensive nonsense, way more interactive spells. He has things he can cast. I guess the plan was just tireless tracker into magma sprays and abrades. That could work. Yeah, just transform into like this kind of mid range nonsense deck. You know, as long as you can stop yourself from dying in the early turns and convert some kind of threat in the mid game. So when you start cutting all these Eldrazi's, does it affect the card Hour of Promise? This is the five mana ramp spell. Yes and no. If you were playing the Desertless version, then it does. And yeah, this is the Desertless version. So if you have Deserts, Hour of Promise still can make two twos. But if you don't, it's just a ramp spell. Right. And for Andrew, Andrew and I actually likely doesn't have Deserts. Those make him take extra damage. I don't really want to do that against Tom. Yeah, this deck's really just trying to find some of these four Shrine of the Forsaken Gods and cast a giant Eldrazi, but when you're not making two twos, you're just spending five mana to take whatever damage is on the table. Right, so you're saying then, since he doesn't have deserts, this card, he has to trim down on it? He seems think? quite poor in this matchup, I would say. And he, he can really board in a lot of leaner threats. You know, Thought Not Seer, if he wants to go for the Tireless Tracker, that one plays too. And he can really just be this green-red mid-range deck. You know, it's not as good at being a mid-range deck as something like uh, Team or Energy or anything like that. Uh, yeah, but it's totally reasonable. It, it seems just fine in a matchup like this. A lot better than just filling your hand with 7 and 10 mana spells that you can never resolve. All right, deck lists go back away, meaning they're going to shuffle up for the second game. Andrew on the play. I'm interested to see the 70, the 60 he's going to present here, what the strategy is. It's tough because a ramp, his deck's defining element, the ramp part, is what he has to get rid of here. Yeah. So he becomes green-red stuff. And it's, it is interesting, too, because you're... Ideally, you, you, your idea of your deck is that you're a good ramp deck, and you board yeah. into a bad mid-range deck. But that's just what you have to do for the matchup. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the green-red mid-range. The idea of it, say a team or energy deck, pretty good against mono-red. There's yeah. a lot of play there. So if you have that, that basic strategy, but you downgrade your deck, you know, don't tap harness lightnings. Lining up. In hard, terms yeah. of strategy and philosophy matters so much more than in just abstract quality of deck. Nothing's happening right. in the abstract. Games happen in reality. Right. It's all about how the cards match up. There's legacy decks that lose to standard decks. That's just the reality. You can say in some matchups, I mean, it was very interesting to me, you know, oh, yeah, con control is generally really good against burn. Yeah, that's fair. And then you go over to modern, say play blue-white control against burn. You're like, well, there actually aren't counter spells in this version of control. Right. You know, Supreme Verdicts Act don't work here. Give me uh, some control deck against Legacy Burn. That can be a rough go for the control deck as well. It's because of the free spell oh. out of the Legacy deck. Yeah, that's when you start getting to the quality, quality of each deck, to be sure. But you know, like, yeah, we'll see here. Second game, Andrew on the play. And here we go, game trail starting off for Hollingsworth. See a Thought Not Seer hanging out in Andrew's hand. Now he's not on the desert version, so how is he actually casting this Thought Not Seer? It's a good mix of colorless lands, four Shrine of the Forsaken Gods, three Sanctum of Ugin, largely to facilitate large Eldrazi shenanigans, and there's also one copy of Drown Yard Temple. So eight total color sources. And he has one in play. Shrine was his second land. Tom, once again, though, on the curve out, Falconrath Gorger will play into Scrap Heap Scrounger. The Drown Yard Temple is actually kind of a cool thing. There's no way to discard it or go over it in your deck, but it's the best land to use when you're using it to rebuy World Breakers. Yeah. We saw some of that. If you go way back to when Magic Origins was legal, there was... Green Red Ramp decks, which are frequently Tormenting Voice and Magmatic Insight away the Drown Yard Temple and then use it as a ramp spell, and you'd play four of them in Green Red Ramp. Uh, not nothing, and they played World Breaker too then. Nothing as fancy as that, but the World Breaker Temple interaction is still pretty nice. Right. Those decks were awesome. I liked that. It's, you, when my ramp decks have that level of play to it, that's really fun for mm -hmm. me. See, once again, a double shrine start for Andrew. 
It does have removal here, though. Looks like the uh, struggle to survive may have come in just for the front half. It's another kill spell. Yeah. Might have an opportunity to make Tom get rid of the scrounger out of his graveyard with the survive side, Ooh. too. I can only hope. Struggle an instant for three, da three mana. Deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands he controls. So it'll kill anything. Not the most efficient spell, but right. this, this deck has just got such a high mana curve anyway. Look over here. Hour of Promise has at least in some amount been kept in for Andrew's deck. Has one at the front of his hand. Tom will go to attacks. Kozlex return will clean away the creatures. And post-combat, Tom makes Oncrop Crasher. Didn't run straight into Kozlex return. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. He knows that that one is in abundance post sideboard. So played around the right card, but it's even when you play around it, it's still pretty good. And Tom has a great follow up to this too. You know, use all his mana here, even though it's a haste creature. You don't take that mana forward to the next turn. He'll be able to follow up this Crasher with a Chandra Torch of Defiance on the following turn. And that's really nice because the Green Red Ramp deck doesn't have straight removal for a Planeswalker and is not particularly good at making attackers. He could get a lot of value off that Chandra. Oh, yeah. Oath of Nyssa. And actually, that's going to be a cycle of one of his ramp spells Beneath here. the sands. And makes Cinder Glade. Back over to Tom. His opponent tapped out. We'll see how much damage he wants to push. It's a good window for Chandra, but if he has some haste creatures, there's an argument for getting them onto the battlefield here. Well, he also has to worry about Hour of Devastation if he makes Chandra here. That would cleanly answer both Planeswalker and creature. Yeah, that is true. No black mana just yet, so he wouldn't be able to bring back Scrap Heap Scrounger here. If you get Chandra down and start plussing it, you do force Andrew to have Hour of Devastation right now. So in the following turn, you can get it up to six. Soul Scar Mage. And it looks like Invigorated Rampage here for Tom. That is really aggressive. Playing that when he has a nice. window where he knows he won't get hit by Kozlek's return. Boom, four more damage. You're at 10. Go. Fifth land here for Andrew. Second, a braid hanging out there. He has Chandra. Looking to go Chandra plus and a braid. Not a bad turn. Yeah. Consulting over with Kevin Tulin. Kevin playing the modern match there against Todd Stevens. Both of them down a game. There is still Thought Not Seer in Andrew's hand. I'm interested to see just how he plays that one. Right now, if he runs it out, it would get hit by Chandra. If it, or would be forced to take Chandra. He will cast Torch of Defiance. See there, Oath of Nyssa helping him tap the lands. Yeah, double red, no problem. Yeah, as much as you want. Chandra pluses, looks like to make mana. And here's a braid. And with Chandra on the other side of the battlefield, that does make Ch Tom's Chandra quite a bit worse. Yeah, Anders and a lot of removal. We see here two copies of a braid and one copy of struggle to survive. So three kill spells here. And he's debating whether he wants to play struggle, I think, or the abraid. Struggle, he would he has the extra mana actually for it, but it does deal more damage in case of a card like Glorybringer or something big out of Tom's sideboard. Yeah. No no Glorybringers here and deck lists are face up. Okay, I guess Harvester, I don't know if that'd be there. Does it, what is the biggest toughness if, uh, that Tom we has? We start eternalizing Earthshaker Kenras. Okay. Those are four fours. That's the only four toughness he has going on. The, if, if he brought in Aethersphere Harvester. I don't think that's there. I'm inclined to agree. So struggle to survive. That's a one of an Andrew's hand. The kill spell half of it, struggle, instant. The other side, sorcery. 
But here's something that you can't kill with struggle. That'd be an indestructible creature, and Tom has one of those. The other card in his hand was Hazaret the Fervent. He's, Huge turn for Tom. So he swings both, and look at this. He just ignored Chandra with Hazaret there. Went Chandra straight doesn't upstairs. matter. Well, Andrew could get to eight and still not mm, be able to cast eight. Duelamog. We could cast We Could World Break the Hazaret. No, it's not an. No. Yeah. That's yeah. not the old. These, these, gods these gods are not don't, enchantments. These gods don't get killed by World Breaker. And Hazaret's going to be really hard to answer here. And Tom does also have Ramyanap runes there. Another Is desert Andrew backup. At four? Multiple Ooh, okay. ways to get some direct damage in here. And if Andrew doesn't win this game, Kevin Tulin is going to have to get two sideboard games against Green White Company. That's going to be rough, though. Todd's sideboard doesn't actually make him much better in the matchup. He has okay, a very just, small number of cards. The main. <laughs> yeah, that is the problem. The main deck is so good. I don't have any sideboard because I main decked all the cards you can't beat. <laughs> Plus here from Chandra will exile a top card for Andrew. With this Hazaret, I, I don't know that Andrew can remove it. With Hazaret, not an easy one to remove for anybody, Thought really. Not seer. And, th and this may just be a clean win here because we mentioned that burn green white matchup. Not only game one, but right next to Todd, to Tom rather, Todd takes game two. That's a match win in modern for Todd Stevens. So he is. 4-0 right now with his deck in the top eight. Thought on Seer takes care of the Chandra, but Tom has everything that he needs here. Attacking with Hazaret forces a block with the Thought Not Seer. That means that the Soul Scar Mage will be able to connect for one or demand a removal spell. Plenty of burn backup. The Hazaret's ability, the Ramy Nap ruins. Right. Swings both. Thought Not will have to just jump in front of Hazaret. What Andrew needs to do is produce Ulamog on the following turn. That's the only way he can deal with Hazaret by exiling it. But then he still has the matter of the deserts. I suppose you exile Ramunap Ruins, you exile and Hazaret. Hazaret. You only and take two Ram on that exchange. But All then right. there's a lot of reach still in Tom's deck. Yeah, I mean, there's a million cards you still lose too, but not right now. Right. Tom is one card short of just double activating Hazaret. You see a braid there took care of Soul Scar Mage. So Tom will make Falconrath Gorgeous, the last card in his hand, and Andrew now needs Ulamog to keep his team in the tournament. He's not even sure if it's in his deck, but you better hope it is. Chandra. Plus, if it pluses though, can he can he cast Ulamog? So he has two shrines currently. Six lands on the battlefield, so that only gets him to nine with another land drop, unless it's a, unless third, it's a third shrine. shrine yeah. And he doesn't have any plays like a Thought Knot or a Chump Blocker that can buy him another turn because of this Ramanap Ruins. Mm -hmm. And Tom with the requisite mana to activate that on the end step. World Breaker is the play from Chandra. That'll put Tom to 18. He's not going to cast that. He loses on the board if he does. What's that other card he's got? Struggle to survive, one we don't know about. It's looking like Thought Not Seer. That is not going to do it. Thought Not Seer, and Tom sa says go. Tom says take two off this desert. Untap, draw. How about another hit off Ram and App Ruins? How about a card to discard to Hazaret? And that'll do it. <laughs> Games won. A 2-0 win for Tom Ross. A 2-0 win for Todd Stevens. And the one seed moves on. They win the rematch, and they are going to the finals. And that matchup did look really rough for the ramp deck. Uh, just with how much lower to the ground the aggressive red deck is, it's going to be really difficult. Yeah, and a great tournament for Savage, Tulin, and Hollingsworth.